Hello guys, we all know how a basic buck converter works. I already made a video on this 5 years back. Yeah, I was intelligent back then also. In this video, we are going to see the control loop of DC to DC converter without using any operational amplifier or complex control logic. So let's start. If you know how a buck converter works, then just skip to this timestamp and know about this different control technology. If not, let's go through that again very quickly. The buck converter is a non-isolated DC to DC converter topology, which steps down the input voltage. That's why it is also called a step down power converter. The output voltage is always less than the input voltage in the same polarity. Like if you have an input voltage of 30 volts, it will step down to a constant 12 volt power supply. It is made up of an active switch, a passive switch, an inductor, and a capacitor. That's all. These four components create this magic, and that's how they connect each other. The input current for a buck converter stage is discontinuous or pulsating due to the active switch. The output current for a buck converter is continuous or non-pulsating because the output current is supplied by the output inductor and capacitor combination. Well, the output capacitor never supplies the entire load current. Let's say it's working in easier words. If you want to learn how any power converter works, then a very basic strategy to understand it is by dividing its operation into two different parts. In this non-isolated type of topology, when one switch is on, Another switch is off every time. Let's consider this active switch is a MOSFET. Now it is turned on. This path closes. The current flows through the inductor and it starts charging. During this time, it stores electromagnetic energy. So the output voltage would be equal to input voltage minus VL, where VL is the voltage across the inductor. This charging of the inductor stops as soon as the current in the circuit goes to peak current and this MOSFET turns off. Now the inductor wants to release the stored energy. So it will generate a flyback voltage. The value of this voltage will be similar to the output voltage. During this time, the polarity of the inductor reverses and it tries to force the current in the same direction. Due to that, this diode is forward biased and the inductor starts discharging, which provides the power to the load. This cycle repeats again and again, which provides constant output voltage. This continuous cycle repeats only after we provide PWM to this MOSFET with a particular duty cycle. That means we should provide an on pulse and an off pulse continuously during the operation. And the relationship between output voltage and input voltage is given by the duty cycle, where this D is the duty cycle of the PWM given to the MOSFET. Now, even if we change the input voltage from 28 volts to 35 volts, it should still give the constant voltage of 12 volts. That's the very basic and essential requirement of any power supply to provide a constant regulated output voltage, even though there is any change in the input. To achieve this, we should use a closed loop feedback technique, which basically checks the output voltage compared with a reference and provides the necessary gate signal to the active switch. We have already seen such control techniques while learning about the power factor correction and CCCV charger for battery. This control is achieved by op amp based comparators and error amplifiers. But I found a very different and easy solution to control this buck converter without using a complicated technology, which only use a Zena diode and not get. Let's see the circuit. I've taken the circuit from a development board provided by Nexperia. This is basically an edge bridge motor driver circuit and we are going to check its power supply section. If you want to know how this whole circuit works, then you can check my last video by clicking on this card. Well, it has no proper frequency selection. So if you see, it has a very big inductor value of around 390 microhertz. If the switching frequency decreases, the size of the passive components such as inductor and capacitor value increases. This is the overall control circuitry, 
This is the totem pole circuit to switch the MOSFET. This is the BJT switch to control the totem pole circuit. And at the input of the BJT, there is a NOT get. We are taking feedback from the output here from a Zener diode. Now let's take an example. Initially, this inverting Schmidt trigger IC U21 will get power from the power supply through R10, which turns on this IC. There is no input because D3 is connected to the output of the buck converter, which does not give any output at the moment, which means its output would be high. For simplicity, we'll call the high state as 1 and low state as 0. In easy words, 1 means we see some voltage at the input and 0 means there is no voltage. Now, there is 1 at the output of the U21, which will turn on the BJT Q3. That means this voltage at this branch would pull down to 0. Hence, there is 0 at the input of the totem pole. If the input is 0, Q1B would turn on and pull the gate of the MOSFET Q5 to ground, which will turn on the MOSFET. As soon as Q1 turns on, the inductor L1 will charge and voltage at the output would rise. This will give feedback and it will come from the Zener D3. As soon as the output voltage reaches to 10 volts, this Zener diode starts conducting. During this time, VCC is on and provides 5 volts to U21. Well, for the initiation, this startup circuit is used. The output voltage will keep on rising until it reaches 12 volts. Well, voltage drop across this resistor would be 2 volts. Now this IC gets this voltage and inverts it at the output, providing 0 at the base of the Q3. Q3 turns off, hence input of the totem pole would be 1. And Q4A turns on, which pulls the MOSFET Q5 to high and it turns off. When the MOSFET turns off, the diode D6 turns on and the inductor starts discharging, providing necessary output voltage. Now, when the output voltage goes below 12 volts, the U21 would get 1 and Q3 will turn on. Consequently, Q4B will turn on, which will turn on the MOSFET Q5. And this particular cycle keeps on repeating, which provides the PWM to the MOSFET Q5. If you change the input voltage range, this PWM duty cycle will change to provide a constant output voltage. Now, let's see the working of this circuit. The load is connected. I have already turned on the scope. This is the our next PDR development board. We are checking the output voltage on DMM. Now I will turn on the power supply. Yeah, as you can see, the motor is running. Right now the input voltage is around 16 volts. Let's see the behavior of the circuit which we just saw, which is mounted over here. There are different test points on the circuit where we can check the output. This is the test point 5. Uh, it is inverted but yeah, it is a test point 5 and it is giving us the output voltage. And the output voltage is around 12.1 volts. Now the next is test point 2. It gives the output of ICU21. And this test point 4 gives us the gate signal value. I have already connected the probes of the DSOs to these test points. Now let's see how this PWM signal is working. As I change the input voltage, the duty cycle of the PWM is also changing. This waveform is at TP2 and this waveform is at TP4. So as you can see, when TP2 is high, the TP4 is low. And when the TP4 is high, the TP2 is low. We can even calculate the frequency of the circuit. Which is around 2 kHz. Well, this circuit doesn't have the constant frequency. As you can see, if I am changing the input voltage, the duty cycle as well as the frequency of this buck converter is changing, keeping the output voltage constant. Well, 
That's how a very basic DC to DC converter would work without the complex controlling method. I hope you got something from this. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.